What's up guys, thank you so much for joining me on this free color grading lesson today. In case this is our first time meeting, my name is John Weatherby and I'm a full-time travel and landscape photographer. Probably the most frequent question that I get asked is how I achieve the coloring look of my photos while editing. So today I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips for adjusting the color in an image and taking it to the next level. Tip number one, bit depth. To ensure that we can take an image to its full potential, we must first make sure we're editing it in an optimal workspace. 16-bit is the best setting for color adjustment and retouching since it has more bit depth than an 8-bit image. This results in a smoother transition between colors which can prevent unwanted banding while editing. To ensure that you're taking your pictures from Lightroom into Photoshop with this setting, you can go to Preferences, then External Editing, and make sure you're exporting your images to Photoshop in 16-bit with 300 DPI for the best results. If you're opening your photos from Camera Raw, you can check at the bottom and click to change these settings. Once you're in Photoshop, you can always double check your bit setting by going to the image tab and your bit depth is listed next to mode. Tip number two, raw development. You always get the most editing capabilities and details from a raw file. A lot of people first starting out prefer to shoot in JPEG because the image produced looks better straight out of camera, but this limits the information in the file by baking the adjustments into the picture. So I always recommend shooting in RAW to unlock your photo's full potential. I usually keep my RAW development very basic because I do all the heavy lifting in Photoshop, but first I do get my image to a good baseline through a few select adjustments. After I've made my basic exposure adjustments and camera corrections, I start with the white balance and tint. Depending on the goal of the image and whether you want to keep it accurate or create something more surreal, you'll want to adjust the white balance and the tint accordingly. If I'm editing a sunset photo for instance, I would adjust the white balance to be warmer and the tint possibly more towards magenta. If I'm going for a more moody shot or a day to night composite, I would adjust the white balance to be cooler and the tint possibly more in the green range for instance if I'm editing Aurora. You should base it off the goal of the photo and you can always revert back to as shot or use the eyedropper to find a neutral or whitish gray tone part of the photo to select for auto white balance. Command Z is your best friend if this doesn't work. Sometimes I also use split toning. This is a good way to selectively target the color in the highlights or the shadows of an image. The hue slider selects the tone and the saturation slider is for the intensity. Lastly, you can adjust the calibration and tweak it to create dramatic color effects. Again, I like to keep my adjustments minimal because I can get crazy with the coloring later on in Photoshop and have more control over these adjustments using layer masks. Once you're happy with the raw development, go ahead and open your image from Lightroom into Photoshop by right clicking or just hitting Command plus E or Control plus E on a PC. Tip number three, use photo filters. Photo filters are a great quick adjustment to add into your edits. When you make a new adjustment layer, by default they come with a layer mask attached. I like to use warming filters for golden hour shots or composites and cooling filters for night or blue hour shots and composites. Pro tip, you can use a colored filter to help sell and edit. For instance, if I blend an aurora shot with a blue hour foreground, I'll usually add a green photo filter to the ground to mimic the color cast from the aurora. You can always paint out parts of the adjustment using the provided layer mask or by lowering the opacity of the layer, you can decrease the overall strength and appearance. Tip number four, color balance. Color balance adjustments are a great option to selectively target colors in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. This can be a great way to correct a color cast in one of those ranges if you don't want to affect the others. Or if you want to add a complementary color grade, for example, adding warming tones in the highlights and cool tones in the shadows. You see this effect a lot with teal and orange in movies and photos. I usually wind up only adjusting the highlights and midtones because it's a more subtle effect than the shadows, but use this technique at your discretion depending on the goal of the image. Tip number five, HSL sliders. HSL or hue saturation and luminosity sliders are a great way to target specific colors. Using HSL sliders, you can change these values of each color independently. This can be a great way to direct the viewer's focus to one part of an image by increasing the color or luminosity of the part and decreasing the values of the others to make it stand out. Tip number six, selective color. If you thought we've covered all the ways to adjust colors, you're wrong. We have yet one more powerful adjustment and that's selective color. Through this tool, we can change the amount of colors within a color, fine tuning the look of the tone to the maximum. For instance, if I go to the greens and I think this green should be less yellow and more blue, I can decrease the yellow and it becomes more blue toned. The way this works is by introducing the color on the opposite end of the spectrum. Because blue is opposite to yellow, we can decrease the yellow and we get more blue. If we increase the yellow, we'd have more yellow in the green tones. Same for cyan, which has the opposite of red. Less cyan equals more red in the color tone and increasing means more cyan in that particular tone. 
Opposite of magenta is green and you get the picture. Additionally, we can use the whites and blacks to adjust the luminosity of the color. This is the most targeted way to change the overall look of a specific color. Tip number seven, gradient map. A trick that I sometimes use to add mood to my images is using a gradient map based on all the prominent colors in the photo. The first step for this is to grab your color picker or just hit the letter I on the keyboard. Pro tip, the keyboard shortcuts are shown for the tools when you hover over them. We'll go ahead and select the first prominent color and then we'll hit X on the keyboard to toggle to our secondary color and sample that. With these two colors selected, we'll then create a gradient map. You'll see the gradient up top with the colors in the properties panel. You can then change the opacity, blend mode of the layer, or reverse the gradient to experiment with the look. My personal choice is to use the soft light mode for this. Tip number eight, color range. Using color range selection, we can really target specific colors to make adjustments. To do this, simply go up to select, then click color range and the box pops up. Set the selection preview to none and sample the spot with the color you wanna target. Then change the preview to grayscale and adjust the fuzziness to increase or decrease the range of the hues and the color you want to include. You can also check localized color clusters to enable the range option where you can tell Photoshop to target those colors in the area you sampled only or the overall image. To add to the selection, hold down shift and click. To subtract, simply hold down option on a Mac or alt on a PC and click. Once you're happy with the result, click OK and it will load as a selection. You can then create an adjustment layer with the selection still active and it will apply the selection to a layer mask. This means that whatever adjustments you make on this layer will only be visible through the targeted selection. Tip number nine, color layover. One trick to add color in an image or correcting defects like lens flares and color cast is to create a color layover. You can do this by creating a new blank layer and changing the blend mode to color. Then select your brush or just hit B on the keyboard and then hold down option and click on an area of color you'd like to sample and paint it in. You can also just double click on the color box to choose a color, but if you're using this to cover up a flare or a color cast, you'll want to sample the image with a color in close range to where you're painting over for it to look natural. You can use a selection like the color range we just discussed to more precisely paint in an area or a layer mask to paint it out of the areas you don't want the color to show. And this brings us to tip number 10. Targeted adjustments. Through the use of groups, we can bundle multiple adjustments together and then with layer mask, dictate exactly how they're revealed. To make a group, simply select multiple layers while holding down command on a Mac or option on a PC, and then either select the group icon or hit command or control plus G on the keyboard. This groups multiple adjustments or layers into a folder together, and if you turn the group on or off or lower the opacity, it'll affect them collectively. Take it a step further and add a layer mask, and you can paint and selectively reveal or conceal all the layers in the group at once. This isn't a video on layer masks, but here's a quick lesson in case it's not clear. A regular layer mask or white mask does not hide the image, but wherever you paint with black on that layer mask will conceal the image and make the layers below visible. Alternatively, if you hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and click on the mask icon, you create an inverted layer mask or black mask. This mask hides the layer or group that it's on and allows you to paint with white in the mask to reveal certain parts of the hidden image. Just remember, black conceals and white reveals. You can also add layer masks to individual layers inside the group or change their opacities individually. One bonus tip is to use clipping masks. Using a clipping mask, you can connect an adjustment to a specific layer. To do this, simply hover between the adjustment layer and what you'd like to clip it to and hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC until you see the arrow show up and click. Now this adjustment will only affect the layer that is clipped to. So there you have it guys. These are my top 10 tips to adjust colors in Photoshop and techniques that I use in some combination for most of my editing. Finding the techniques that you like and consistently applying them will give your images a recognizable look and style. I hope that you all found this helpful. We'll be covering editing in more depth in future videos. Leave a comment if you have any questions at all and I'll get back to you. Also, let me know if you have any topics you'd like covered in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep learning and keep creating.